Hi guys, welcome back to my channel once again here on YouTube. Another rankings video for you, WWE Crown Jewel. I'm going to rank all five previously released, well, four of them pre uh, previously released uh, DVDs on home video and one custom. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the, the last place, well, place fifth and fourth was kind of difficult for me to decide on and yeah this was a bit of a no-brainer after giving it a bit more thought i decided to put in fifth place crown jewel from 2018 so this is the custom one i was telling you guys about i got this one from my good friend chad stone a few years ago and uh yeah i got cover artwork with ds uh dx sorry logo in the background Shawn Michaels, Kane, Undertaker and Triple H at the bottom there and Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman at the top. There's the spine. And there's the disc. So I don't know if you can see the matches clearly there because it's kind of dark. Sorry guys. So the So this was, in my opinion, after giving it a bit more thought, the worst crown jewel. Um, which doesn't come as any surprise, to be fair. So we had the tour, the the World Cup tournament first of all discuss, which had well, I usually like tournaments, but this one had like all American-born wrestlers and no other wrestler from a different country it was all American, which is just very bizarre. And some of the tournament matches themselves were okay. Um, Dolph Ziggler, he had quite a good run in the tournament. But the, the tournament was ruined by Shane fucking McMahon. And yeah, that really, really wound me up. I didn't like that at all. And apart from that, though, it was good to see Ziggler go through um, like Kurt Angle and... Can't remember who his semi-final opponent was now, but I think it was Seth Rollins, wasn't it? But yeah, he did have a good run in the tournament for what I can remember, and it's a shame he should have like been the overall winner instead of uh, all that crap with Shane McMahon. Really ruined that, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, it's pretty terrible. And we also had um, the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and the Undertaker against DX in that terrible main event so many things going wrong and yeah it, it was just one of those matches that just shouldn't have happened Shawn Michaels should have stayed retired and well all four of them shouldn't have been anywhere near the main event not at this um, stage of their career well Shawn Michaels career was pretty much over anyway but you know what I mean? He shouldn't have came back. It, everything was just a complete disaster, in my opinion, when it came to that. We also had uh, the bar against the New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team Championship, which wasn't too bad. I could just about tolerate that, I guess. Um, Rusev took on Shinsuke Nakamura for the US title. And AJ Styles against Samoa Joe for the WWE Championship. But, yeah, overall, I just wasn't overly keen on that, guys, sadly. I did try giving it a chance. I like to uh, give chance to pay-per-views that get shit on, but it's just no way I could, I could like it. It's just impossible to... I, I, I just don't know what else I can say about it. I, I did try, and I did think to myself, between that and the one I'm about to show you, which should go in fifth place, which should go in fourth place in my rankings, and... Yeah, like I said, it's a no-brainer. Crown Jewel 2018 is the worst out of the five Crown Jewels that have taken place so far, in my opinion. And probably in a lot of your opinions as well, guys. So in fourth place, I decided to put Crown Jewel from 2019. We have uh, Braun Strowman and Tyson Fury at the top there. And Brock Lesnar and Kane Basque. Guez, Vasque, whatever, however you fucking pronounce his name. This was a two disc set from Fremantle. And 
There's the uh, various screenshots we have there of what take of what took place throughout the night. So this one wasn't great either, but it was just a tiny bit better than 2018 after giving it a bit of thought. So the Kane Vala Valasquez Valasque, I don't know how to pronounce his fucking name, the MMA fighter guy. He took on Brock Lesnar in a very shit short match. Pointless. Very pointless in my opinion. Very shit. Um, we had Tyson Fury against uh, Braun Strowman. And I'll be fair, Tyson Fury actually did okay. And I remember looking at some YouTube videos a while back of his training uh, for that match. And... Yeah, he didn't look great, you know what I mean? It wasn't a five-star match, but he tried, and, you know, he didn't look too bad, considering he's a heavyweight boxer and not a fucking professional wrestler. And, um, yeah, Braun Strowman did well to help him through the match. And, yeah, it it was okay for what it was, a sight better than the Lesnar and uh, Kane was his fucking names match. And then we had the first-ever women's match, in Saudi Arabia, so we had Lacey Evans against Natalia. The match was good. I was just annoyed that some dickhead in the crowd decided to launch a bottle at poor Natalia without giving it, you know, a lot of thought. I thought that was kind of harsh. I mean, she's there to entertain you, not to have fucking objects thrown at her, and I just felt that was a bit disrespectful. She could have been seriously injured if it, like, you know what I mean, struck her hard, like in the head or something, for example. But, um, yeah, and imagine if they'd thrown anything else. It would, could have been disastrous. I'm just glad that didn't happen. But, yeah, he's always got to get one dickhead who's got to ruin it. You know what I mean? But apart from that, they, they did have a quite a good match, I thought. Uh, what else did we have? We had, the, uh, we had another World Cup tournament, but it was a tag team tournament, which was won by um, Gallows and Anderson. It was okay, I guess. We had Team Hogan versus Team Flair. So Team Hogan, we had Roman Reigns, Shorty G, Ali, Ricochet and Rusev against Team Flair, which was Randy Orton, Shinsuke Nakamura, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre and King Corbin. Um, I felt this match kind of dragged a bit. It was kind of entertaining when everyone was getting there, like finishing, moving and everything, but it did drag in my opinion. And then we had um, also Bray Wyatt against Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Um, I didn't mind that one. It was it was cool and I was happy with the finish. And it was very similar to the Hell in a Cell match that they had. Again, with like the red light throughout the match, which I found kind of distracting. But that, again, that's just me in my opinion. Um, apart from that, though, they didn't do too bad. It it was quite entertaining, and yeah, the right man won. But I don't understand why Bray didn't win um, at Hell in a Cell, and why he won here. But I'm just glad he won anyway. He deserved to win that um, Universal Championship. So yeah, that was probably one of the main reasons as well. I decided to go with this in fourth place. But there you go. <laughs> Third place, I decided to go with 2023's Crown Jewel. It's really cool artwork on it. I do like the artwork. Very colourful background. Again, this is a Fremantle Release 15 certificate here in the UK. Yeah, the, it, it felt okay. Just every match didn't feel terrible or anything. It was just a very average kind of uh, premium live event. We had um, John Cena versus Solo Sokoa, which I didn't like the outcome of. Bit of a screwy finish to um, the US Championship match with Logan Paul there. And Logan Paul put on a better match at Crown Jewel, which we'll get to shortly. Uh, rather than this uh, particular crown jewel. Seth against uh, Drew McIntyre is pretty cool. 
And then we had um, Cody and Damian Priest's match, which again, wasn't terrible, but average. Oh, and of course he had the uh, LA Knight versus Roman Reigns, which could have been saved for a future WrestleMania main event, given um, LA Knight's popularity and should have had him win the Rumble and then go on to challenge <laughs> Roman Reigns rather than all the Cody shit. But that's just my opinion. I do like Cody, don't get me wrong, but I do like LA Knight more. So yeah, that was third place choice. Second place, I decided to go with 2022s, which you can see the poster I had with this in the background there, guys. This was a two disc set as well. Again, Fremantle Media release. 12 certificate here in the UK. And I know I've talked about this one recently in a um, rankings of 2022 video I did <clears throat> excuse me guys yeah so um yeah I've said it before but yeah lovely screenshot I love that with the uh Superman punch just about to happen at the same time as uh Logan Paul leaping off the turnbuckle very cool the match itself I did enjoy I don't I'm not a fan of both of those but that match in particular was very very cool uh, Lashley against Lesnar was fun as well. I did enjoy the feud between Karrion Cross and Drew McIntyre and their match here was really cool. And the Battle of the Giants, Omas against Braun Strowman, I liked that one too. And we had um, Bailey in her last woman standing match against, um, was, it B was it Bianca Belair? I can't remember now, shit. I think it was. But yeah, I remember that golf cart uh, incident. <laughs> it's pretty cool. And yeah, uh, my second place. My second place, Crown Jewel. And in first place, and I think this came first in the 2021 uh, WWE DVD Blu-ray rankings for me, and it's Crown Jewel uh, 2021. Yeah, there we go. With... Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman on the front. Again, a two-disc set from Fremantle. 15 certificate. Yeah, I did like um, Queen uh, Vega, but I didn't like King Xavier. I just didn't agree with that. I thought Finn Balor should have been the king on this pay-per-view. But other than that, everything else was pretty much perfect and yeah the <laughs> the camel entrance that i've mentioned various times before with riddle riding the back of the camels quite entertaining but i felt sorry for the camels they looked freaked out and the awesome match between um edge and seth rollins where believe it or not seth rollins actually low blows himself <laughs> believe it or not guys is crazy Honestly, check it out if you don't believe me, if you've forgotten. He actually low blows himself. <laughs> and then we got uh, Big E uh, against Drew McIntyre for the WWE Championship, which was a cool match. The women put on a cool match as well in their freeway, or triple threat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, all felt evenly matched as well. Goldberg, you can actually have a good match. You know what I mean? You had a good match against Lashley. I hate it when people keep hating on you. <laughs> but yeah, he had a good match, in my opinion. Even if some of you guys don't want to admit it, this was cool. And um, maybe the right man didn't win, but I was happy Goldberg picked up the victory here. Even though the odds were stacked against him, with um, Bobby's mates coming out to try and help. But um, ended up getting their ass kicked by Goldberg. But yeah. And obviously the main event, uh, Roman Reigns against Brock Lesnar, which was also very much um, a lot of fun to watch. Considering I, I do moan a lot about how many times those guys have met in a main event. And this one in particular was actually pretty cool. And I didn't mind it. And yeah, this is 
my favourite crown jewel, I guess, 2021. And this is my rankings from worst to best crown jewels. So let me know in the comments below what your rankings would be. And are you looking forward to crown jewel next month, 2024? And I wonder who's going to win between Gunther and uh, Cody. Should be interesting. But yeah, thank you for watching today, guys. Uh, feel free to like comment and everything else and take good care of yourselves and i'll catch you again soon for another video stay safe goodbye for now